Thank you, everyone. Let us give a big hand to our outstanding young exhibitors today. Thank you for coming out in the strength on a Sunday. Reid Hoffman, your LinkedIn is a great product. And you are an inspiration to many here and in India. Thank you, Mohan Banki, Ambassador, it is a great pleasure to be here for me. This is a special event because the idea of startups is close to my heart. You are likely to wonder why, because governments and national capitals are supposed to stop or slow things down, not start them up. I know this was once the view of Washington from Silicon Valley, and this is exactly how techies in Bangalore thought about New Delhi. <laughs> and I know that many of you think that the only problems that, that have not been solved are the ones for which you have not written the apps yet. <laughs> when I shifted to Delhi last year, I thought of my government as a startup. So I also saw some of the bumps you face on the road. I understand your challenges, but also the wonderful feeling of creating something new. The course of human history and progress has been shaped by imagination, inspiration, invention, and innovation. I often say, if there is a strong wind blowing, some might want to shut the window. Others will want to put up a windmill or launch their sails on the seas. The difference between perception of something as a challenge or an opportunity is the difference between in-show and initiative, status quo, and progress. The idea of startups is an ancient as this world. Each economic age has been defined by the disruption of the previous one, by the evolution of ideas and products that displaces the old ones. Startups have always been the engine of progress. The mega corporations of today were startup of yesterday. What is different now is that the digital age has created a fertile new environment for startups. This is a world in which you do not grow by extracting resources, by spreading an idea. More than the creator, it is the consumer who discovers applications. Today, the stars of defy the natural rates of growth. An idea can become a global name within a year. Customers can multiply at the rate of millions, employees at the rate of thousands, and valuation at the rate of billions. The convergence of technology, integration, across drives, fields, distributed architecture, and people willing to back an idea have opened a new world 
for enterprise. This ecosystem was born in the Silicon Valley. No community is shaping our world as much as the one on this Californian coast. It is not just big names, but small firms that are fashioning every day new ways in enrich human life with the joy of artists and creators. That underlies America's success and inspires the world. So, I see startups, technology, and innovation as exciting and effective instrument for India's transformation and for creating jobs of our youth. We are a nation of 800 million youth below the age of 35 years. They are eager for change, have the energy, and drive to pursue it and the confidence to achieve it. When each of the 500 odd towns produces five startups, and each of our 600,000 villages produces six small businesses on a regular basis, we will create an enormous economic momentum and generate a huge number of jobs in our country. <laughs> India's own ecosystem of startups is evolving rapidly. Is it driven by the energy, enterprise, and innovation of our youth? We have a huge market with rapid growth and untapped opportunities in every sector. We now have the institutions, incentives, and interests for new ventures. We have incubators, accelerators, and investors willing to back an idea and assume risks. India has woken up to the potential of startups ventures with great enthusiasm and energy. In the past few years, they have grown rapidly. We have here an outstanding group of startups from India. They are applying technology to transform healthcare, education, clean energy, security, financial inclusion of the poor, and access to clean water. Our start startups represent not just commercial success stories, but are powerful examples of social innovation. The pace at which people in India are taking to digital technology defies our stereotypes of age, education, language, and income. There are nearly a billion people with cell phones in India, smartphones, and internet users are in hundreds of millions, growing at high double digits. The scale of India's development need is huge, and the need to achieve it is urgent. We cannot simply continue on the tra traditional paths of development. This is the vision and the spirit behind Digital India, which I spoke about last night. To use technology to transform governance, empower our citizens, Eliminate barriers to opportunities, deepen social change, impart scale and speed to development, improve delivery of services, design affordable products for the poor, customize services for specific groups, and build a more sustainable future for our planet. Startups will have an important role in achieving our vision. From creating infrastructure to providing services, from manufacture of products to human resources development, 
from supporting governments to enabling citizens and promoting digital literacy, Digital India is a vast cyber world opportunities for you. I see startups not as short-term investment, but as a long-term commitment. Our application and enterprise is limited only by our imagination. We have here today our Department of Space that provides free data on its portal. In the course of past few months, we have put together 170 applications of space technology in governance and development. Many of these could, be, could become the vehicle of new ventures in India. But it is not just about the opportunities generated on the digital platform and advanced science by urban enterprises. I want to see the idea and the spirit of startups light up the economies and the fortunes of the people in rural India. From handicaps to tourism, the frontiers of possibilities and the scale of reach in India is immense. I want this especially for our rural women who have shown marvelous success in enterprise whenever they have had opportunity. They transform not only our rural economy, but also our society. Our development models speak of public sector and private sector. I speak of a third sector, personal sector, of individual enterprises, micro enterprises, and micro finances. That is why I focus on Startup India in the Independence Day address this year. We are launching schemes that will support our mission. And I assure you that they will not trap your creativity in long government procedures. One is the Atal Innovation Mission. After former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee to promote innovation. Another is Setu, which means bridge in Hindi self-employment and talent utilization. This will be an incubation and facilitation program. We are also setting up an electronic development fund to support design, development, and launch of new products. We are reforming our regulations and processes, and making it easier to start and do business in India. We are making our digital infrastructure and services accessible and affordable. That will also bring broadband to 600,000 villages and the free Wi-Fi to schools, universities, and public places. We are also giving the highest importance to data privacy and security, intellectual property rights, and cyber security. So make in India, skill India, and design India will create a surge of opportunities. So friends, as we thought of startups, it was natural to choose Silicon Valley for our first overseas event. <laughs> for India and the United States have a natural partnership of innovation and technology that has shaped, shaped the knowledge economy. I am told that Indians account for 15% of startups here. Hundreds of thousands of Indian professionals here and in India are contributing to the global success of US enterprise. Many are leading them today. Our university labs and firms are working together for next generation advanced biofuels, 
solar energy and energy efficiency. Young Stanford scholars are teaming up with Indian counterparts in Delhi to make affordable biomedical devices for rural India. MIT Tata Center's Kethworks is changing the lives of small farmers with solar-based irrigation systems. We have here with us Manu Prakash, a young Indian scientist in Stanford, who has left to his name at the university. This is the power of our cooperation and collaboration. Sitting here, you can touch the life of a young child in a remote village. I also hope that a young girl in a small town in India will look at the exhibitors today and dream of her own project. And someone in Mumbai or the Bay Area will be the angel to her dreams. This is the possibility. <laughs> this is the possibility of the digital bridge to connect distant lives and change fortunes and future. This is the potential of youth and innovation. It can ignite a partnership between India and the United States, which can advance prosperity in our two countries and give new content to our strategic partnership. It can enable us to lead in the digital century and find solution to enduring human problems and emerging global challenges. I'm delighted to see so many new partnerships form, form today. I'm honored to launch the Bharat Fund today, which stands not just for India, but also for better health, agriculture, renewable, and technologies. I'm delighted that Qualcomm announced a fund of 150 million US dollars for startups in India. I want to thank TIE, TAI, for its valued suggestions for creating a more supportive environment for startups. I know you will succeed on the strength of your genius and enterprise, but when you need a helping hand or when you find hurdles in your way, we will be there for you. Let me thank NASCOM, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, and Thai Silicon for this very special event. I'm confident that you have inspired many young talents in India, launched thousands and new dreams, and shown the seeds of many India-US partnership. Thank you very much.